Hey there, Matt Easton, Scholar Gladiator, and uh, I did a video before talking about my stick, and um, I asked a couple of questions on there. I think we've absolutely conclusively um, all agreed that this is definitely a South African stick. Um, and the wood, uh, there's several different woods have been suggested, some of which I think are the same woods by different names, but anyway. Um, uh, generally speaking, we did all absolutely agree that it's a South African um, stick. These are quite common in South Africa. You can still buy them today um, as walking sticks or for hitting people with. <laughs> um, it's an incredibly strong wood. I've hit it with my punch bag um, liberally and it's uh, stood up very, very well. As for the age of this, well, as, as I mentioned before, it came with a bunch of, uh, well, I didn't buy it, but it, it came to the dealer that I bought this from with a bunch of kind of World War II-ish, I think World War I, World War II, kind of 1930s maybe era uh, military, including middle, medals and other stuff from South Africa. That doesn't mean that it's as old as that, but it might be. The fact is these sticks have been made um, since the, I would say the late 19th, end of the 19th century, um, right the way through, and they're still being made today. So it could be of any age, doesn't really particularly matter. I suspect that it has some age to it, just from the wear and tear on it. Um, but there we go, that's not particularly important. It's a fairly common type of South African stick, and it's really cool. Um, in terms of hitting with it, as I mentioned before, you've essentially got two options. You can either hit, probably as was inten intended originally, with the um, club end, essentially with the knob end, or indeed you can hold the knob and use the stick more nimbly, more like a sword basically. We find both of these explained in Allenson Wynne and various other um, Victorian and Edwardian treatises dealing with the use of sticks, um, generally speaking in um, Lacan and the French systems I think they mostly hit with the thin end, but like I say different systems hit with either the big end or the thin end and some systems do both uh, in different scenarios depending how you're using the thing. Um, the traditional way of using a shillelagh for example as described in Allens and Wynne is to hold um, about 12, 12, 9 or 12 inches of, of the stick, I was going to say the blade because I'm used to talking about swords, of the stick sticking out the bottom and that's also sometimes used for guarding and, and perhaps hooking, a um, bit like a messer, um, but definitely for guarding um, and then hitting with the big end but of course that shortens your weapon for me, I think it comes down to what you're using it for and who you're using it against. Um, if, for example, you're against a knife assailant, then I would argue that someone trying to stab you, it's better to have the extra reach and the extra speed and use it that way around. Um, whereas if you're fighting against someone else who's got a stick, well, then it might make sense to use it more as a club. But the, what I really want to talk about is the fact that a number of people pointed out that this is a knob carry. Well, I didn't respond directly to those points because a lot of people made that point. Of course, as someone who's been fascinated by the history of warfare and weapons since I was a small child, I know what I do know what a knob carry is. So the knob carry is the traditional Zulu club, essentially, and they actually come in different forms. And you find similar clubs from all over Africa, but elsewhere as well. When you actually think about it, uh, the root, um, usually the root of a, of a stick with the, with the branch used the stick is probably one of the oldest weapons known to mankind and you can find things that look almost identical to knob carries in places like Fiji um, and um, you know other parts of very you know widespread parts of the world and probably every more at least let's say not everywhere but let's say most parts of the world have had something that looks a bit like a knob carry or very like a knob carry in some cases at some point in their cultural history um, but in terms of this I personally wouldn't call this a knob carry now I might be wrong in that but the reason I wouldn't call it a knob carry is because of the relatively small size of the knob um, now if I had a big knob, I would absolutely call this a knob carry. <laughs> I'm trying hard not to laugh here. But if I had a really massive knob, I would not at all dispute the fact that this would be a knob carry. But the fact is, I've got a really small knob. And the fact that I've got a small knob on the end of my shaft means that I don't really class this as a knob carry anymore. Now, I might be wrong, when I say I might be wrong, what I mean is it's possible in South Africa, it doesn't matter how big your knob is, it might be that you just call it a knob carry regardless of whether you've got a big knob or a small knob. I don't know, okay? South Africans, feel free to comment underneath here. I know I've got 
a uh, fair few uh, viewers in South Africa. Uh, hi to you. I don't know what, I'm, what the local way of going hi is, but obviously you speak English, so you probably just say hi, but maybe you've got some, I don't know, yo or something, I don't know. Um, but um, yeah, essentially, do, would you call this a knob carry? I personally wouldn't. Now, I read something a long time ago. I was interested in the Zulu Wars, um, as they're sometimes known. There might be other names for them, but the Zulu Wars of the primarily the 1870s, the, so 1879, 1880 is the famous um, sort of Zulu Wars as featured in the movie Zulu. Um, but in fact, there were co obviously conflicts, various conflicts in South Africa that started all the way back at the beginning of the sort of uh, Boer or Dutch uh, migration into that area. Um, so what's that, kind of 1820s or 30s, I think? So early 19th century. I'm not fantastic at all on that period of history. Um, but uh, I know that they used uh, lagers, I think, so uh, wagons in circles and travelled across, kind of very cool. Anyway, interesting period of warfare. Um, and the Zulus, of course, are not the only cultural group in South Africa or living in South Africa before the, before the white people turned up. There were, obviously, there were lots of other tribes and, uh, you know, um, uh, they were kind of more or less at least um, in the sort of Zululand area, they're more or less conquered, as I understand it, by the Zulu. Um, so we could liken the Zulu a bit to maybe like the Aztecs or whatever. They were a civilization who conquered those around them and uh, kind of, it was a cultural phenomenon, I suppose, but there were other groups there. But they, they, a lot of them use similar, if not the same, weapons. So for example, the famous stabbing spear used by the Zulus was the Iklwa, um, supposedly named after the sound that it makes when it's pulled out of a wound. I'm not sure I really believe that. But it may be true, I don't know. Um, that weapon was sort of, if not designed, it was kind of promoted by Shaka. Um, and King Shaka, and, and King Shaka essentially was the founding father of the Zulu nation as we came to know them, and the very kind of militaristic and um, very successful, it has to be said, uh, fighting their um, Boer and um, British and other um, neighbours. Um, but um, he instigated this short stabbing spear. We won't go into, I'll maybe talk about that in a different video because it warrants its own video, it's a very interesting thing. Incidentally, some people know the Zulu spear as an Asagai, my understanding, and again, correct me if I'm wrong, but my understanding is the Asagai is actually the throwing spear, um, which they did have, longer throwing spears, um, and the Iklua is the short stabbing spear. But anyway, um, and they did have clubs, okay? They had clubs, and they do, well, they still do have clubs. And um, my understanding is that once um, the area came under um, British control, um, so at the end of the 19th century, um, that laws were brought in regarding the size of your knob. And uh, quite simply, because the large knobbed knob carry was seen as a warlike instrument, um, there was some type of control, I don't know whether it was a law as, as such or whether it was more locally enforced, um, about having smaller knob on the end of your of your stick um, so that you could still use it as a stick you could still you know hit animals see off animals with it and this kind of stuff but it wouldn't be so fatal in a um, in a encounter in an uprising essentially so this was about the I guess the British government trying to um, disarmed to an extent, although not totally, because they needed weapons for self-defence and hunting, uh, but to a degree to make the, con the conquered, should we say, the, the, the suppressed population being more um, easy to control because they didn't necessarily have... Now, I don't know whether this is true or whether this is more recent political revisionism. I don't know, okay? But that's what I've read. And it is notable that you start to get these small knobbed knob carries, if we're going to call this a knob carry for a second. Um, we do get these in that kind of period, end of the 19th and into the 20th century. And I have heard that the law, and I don't know if this was a law, but I'd be very interested to know someone who knows more about this, was that if you could fit it in your mouth, this is going to, no, I'm not going to do that. If you could fit it in your, <laughs> I'm the, okay, I'm not that stupid. Um, but if you could fit the knob in your mouth, um, then it was legal. Now, is that true or is it an old wives tale, an urban myth? I don't know. So what I, I'm going to, I could have specifically gone and Googled this, but I'd quite like you guys to go and Google it and come back and comment underneath. So was it an actual law that knob carries had to be able to fit in your mouth to be legal? And if they were bigger than that, they were deemed as a weapon of war and illegal. I would really not like to know the answer to that. So 
Moving on from this knob carry, I don't personally consider this a knob carry as such, I consider it more of a stick, although maybe it is a knob carry that, that applies to these laws that were brought in about the size of your knob. Um, now, this is what I consider a knob carry. So there we go, I have a knob carry. Now, this is a particularly long example. Um, it's difficult for me to show, uh, because obviously the lower half of my body is off the camera, but if I put the point on the ground, it comes up to my belt buckle, okay? So it is like a, a walking stick, but a long walking stick, and you'll notice it has a pointy end at the other end. Now, I don't think this is a particularly old one, although, uh, the wood is a dark and very hard wood. It's a similar wood to the one I showed before, but it is not the same wood, I don't think. So this wood is characterized by having a very black or very dark brown side and a kind of a kind of U colored or quite a rich kind of reddish brown side. Um, this is not, this is all one color and doesn't have any um, division in the, in the wood like that. Um, but it is quite a dark wood and it's insanely stiff. So given that it's, I mean, it's not hugely thick, is it? It's, it's, it's about the, maybe a tiny bit thicker than the other stick that I showed. And I literally, when I do that, it's got a tiny flex in it, but that is so stiff. That's one of the stiffest pieces of wood I think I've ever got my hands on. Um, but the, and the, clearly, as you can see, this is a much bigger knob. Um, and that, if you hit someone with the, with the knob end of that, is going to do a lot more damage um, than the small knob. Uh, for a couple of reasons as well. The obvious reason is it's heavier, okay? So there's a concentration of mass at the end, which obviously increases uh, the momentum, ow, um, increases the momentum, and it, it's a heavy, dense wood as well. Don't think about a normal piece of wood from the hardware store when you're looking at this. This is, uh, this is about, I don't know, like 50% heavier than a piece of pine, um, maybe even more than that. It's a really dense, heavy piece of wood. So hitting someone, I <laughs> notice I'm pulling it now because I hurt my hand before, um, hitting someone with the club end is a lot more mass at the end, a lot more momentum being transferred into the target. But additionally, because it's round here, what that essentially does is reduces the surface area that you're making contact with. If I hit, um, say, someone in the head with a straight stick, my head's quite good for demonstrating with because I've got no hair in the way. Um, if I hit someone with a straight stick, Okay, yes, my head is curved, but the stick is straight, so it actually spreads over a fairly long area. If I hit the head with the knob, it only hits with a very, very small area because this is curved and this is curved. So that means that these two, I'll just try and put this down for a second, these two circular objects are only sort of kissing each other, t touching each other on a very small surface area, which means you're concentrating the energy into a much more specific spot and you're more, more likely to break the skull um, at, or you know, break bones, you're more likely to just do more damage basically even if it's just splitting the skin and causing lots of bleeding. Um, so a very effective weapon really and it's not massive, you'll notice it's not a colossal knob, it's just a kind of, I mean it's not as big, it's not as, big as my fist and I should say I actually have, well I say I have my, my father has, I don't have it in my possession, hence I haven't showed it, but uh, he has a Fijian war club, which essentially looks like a short version of this. It's about that long, and the knob is bigger, um, so it's more like a mace, actually. Um, now, obviously, you've got shorter reach with that. It's a bit slower, it's a bit heavier, but it's a, it's a pretty whopping great uh, knob. And again, that's a type of hardwood. Um, I think it's interesting as well that it's a pointy end. I don't know, uh, personally, when I've seen knob carries in the past, they actually had squared off ends and even sl slightly flared at the end so that your hand doesn't slide off. I don't particularly know why this one's pointed at the end, uh, but for my way of using a stick, it makes it rather nice because it means that if I was to use it this way around, which I realize for a South African is probably a horrific idea to think of using a knob carry backwards, but actually if we just consider this as a walking stick for a second, and lots of walking stick defense systems are used with the light end uh, for hitting, it's great because it's like you've got a great big pommel. So, you know, how more awesome can you get that? But a pointy stick with a pommel, it's like all the best things. Uh, it's Christmas, basically. <laughs> Christmas in a stick. Um, so there we go. That is a type of knob carry. I'm not going to say this is a typical knob carry because I think it's much longer than most knob carries are. And I think having this long pointy end, I suspect that this is like the love child of a knob carry with a walking stick, probably made as a tourist item 
in the middle of the 20th for someone in South Africa, you know, um, bringing it back maybe to Britain or whatever. Um, but it's an interesting thing, and certainly, you know, as an impromptu self-defence implement, or indeed, for you know, protecting yourself from animals um, who, you know, are, are particularly over-enthusiastic leopard or whatever, uh, or hyena or something, um, you know, pretty good. You've got you've got a you've got a pointy end you can poke it with, and you've got a club end if things go really haywire um, to give it a good thwack. Um, although I think I'd still prefer a spear, but a spear's not really easy to carry around. This is. Um, so there we go. Um, knobs, knob carries, sticks, a little bit of Zulu stuff, and a question to you. Is it true that under British rule in South Africa that um, the people with knob car carrying knob carries around had to be below a certain size and that this wouldn't be allowed because it won't fit in my mouth because I can't open my mouth that wide, um, but this would fit in my mouth and is that legal? Is that an urban myth or was it an actual thing? Um, sources please. Post below, links, everything. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you with more knobs and sticks quite soon. Cheers, folks. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe. We've got extra videos on Patreon, T-shirts on Spreadshirt, and I hope to see you for the next video.